Skiing is a great pastime. Who wouldn't love paying obscene amounts of money to hurdle down a hill in the freezing cold with two boards strapped to your feet? Whatever your experiences may be, you probably know that skiing is usually a very car-oriented sport. Some will say it was doomed from the start. In addition to becoming popular during the North American auto boom, skiing also involves a lot of equipment, meaning lots of skiers don't want to deal with bringing everything on a bus and then storing it somewhere on the mountain. Plus, buses have a history of getting stuck in the snow. However, we don't necessarily want all of these cars on our ski hills. Ski hill parking lots are notoriously massive and take a lot of space that was once nature. Additionally, the pollution from hundreds or thousands of individual cars converging on one major destination is significant, and the car exclusivity of the sport, especially at smaller and more affordable ski resorts, makes it even less accessible to different groups of people. So, let's take a look at a few places where ski hills are served by transit. In North America, especially outside of major resorts, there are a limited number of places like this, but a few do exist. One major example is Whistler, British Columbia. This medium-sized resort town is served by BC Transit, which operates public transit for all of the province, excluding the Metro Vancouver area. The Whistler Transit system sees more service in the winter than the summer, as with most resort towns. Twelve routes serve the area, operated by regular low-floor transit buses like the New Flyer XN40 and Nova Bus LFS. Surprisingly enough, Whistler has seen significant success with its transit system, largely due to the system's evolution over the last 15 years. Ridership is relatively high, and the system also operates two free shuttle routes, serving popular destinations and hotel areas. So what makes Whistler successful? Honestly, not much. If you looked at the system and ignored the fact that it was on a ski mountain, it would just look like a relatively well-served transit system. And since the buses aren't that special either, it's kind of proof that operating transit in the snow or on a mountain is much more about training and equipment. However, the Whistler example only really clears up the operational side of the skiing and transit equation, not the convenience side. While the Whistler buses may be great for getting from the hotel to the ski slopes or for seeing a movie in the village, they're not so great for getting to and from Whistler. There are no public transit connections from Whistler southbound to Vancouver, where thousands of Whistler regulars live and where tourists fly into the international airport. There are two main coach lines operating Vancouver Whistler service, but both charge over $40 round trip, which costs more than driving. Parking in Whistler is also largely free, with the exception of a few central parking lots. So, most people drive to Whistler and leave their cars in hotel parking garages. This means that Whistler has only really figured out half of the equation. They've got people on buses, but only once they've already made the long trek to the north. Sadly, Whistler is one of the best case examples and is similar to places like Vail and Winter Park, Colorado, which both have decent local transit systems, but expensive and infrequent regional service. Smaller resorts, such as those found in Washington State, see even less transit. For example, all three of the Seattle area's main ski resorts, Snoqualmie, Crystal Mountain, and Stevens Pass, are not accessible via transit, and while each has private express bus offerings, ticket prices can exceed $50, and the service usually runs only once per day, giving little flexibility for different schedules. In Vancouver, there are three main local resorts, Cypress, Grouse, and Seymour. Grouse's base is lower elevation and is in a residential neighborhood, so it has decently frequent local transit service. However, Cypress and Seymour have no local transit and are only served with expensive and infrequent private buses. There are a few ways we can make transit a more attractive option for skiing. The first is cost. Driving to ski resorts is heavily subsidized through tickets and other elements, which means that everyone pays for parking, whether they drive or not. Charging for parking ensures that only those who want to drive will pay for the parking, which could even reduce ticket prices for other skiers. Next, we should implement better public transit service to ski mountains. From a network design perspective, skiing is very easy to serve with transit, because everyone is going to the base of the mountain in the morning and away in the afternoon and evening. Many larger ski towns have a hub-and-spoke planning model, where the main shops, 
restaurants, and hotels are at the base of the lifts, with apartments, staff housing, and private residences further out. This is also very easy to serve because a transit system can offer service to all of these places by simply offering frequent enough service into the central village. For smaller resorts, especially those located near cities, local transit agencies can run ski services, like Link Transit's Ski Link or TransLink's Grouse Mountain routes. Further, some ski resorts are located on highways between cities, such as Stevens Pass and Snoqualmie, so agencies could get some ridership on rural and regional transit lines that stop at these resorts. Finally, ski resorts should be friendlier to those arriving without a car. Offering free lockers for extra gear and changing rooms would help passengers get ready for the ski day, allowing transit agencies to build bus stops and exchanges near lodges and the bases of ski lifts would also make skiing by bus more convenient for potential riders. Finally, making popular ski bus routes free or significantly reduce fare compared to regular service would help to entice cost-conscious skiers to take the bus instead of driving. Not only will making skiing more transit accessible reduce traffic and emissions created by the sport, it will also help increase the accessibility of the sport and allow more people to hit the slopes. Thank you.